If you have a Windows computer and you want to see if you're ready to install SQL Server, just check out this video. We'll show you all the tips and all the gotchas before you even begin. First of all, you're going to need the SQL Server software. If you're doing this on a home computer, one of two recommended ways is you can get the free version of SQL 2008 known as SQL Server Express from the download site, or you can pay up to about $50 for the SQL Server 2008 developer. If you're planning on going far with SQL Server and you wanted to do everything that you can throw at it, I highly recommend you spend the $50 and get the SQL Developer Edition. The installs on this video will assume that you have the CD in hand. How about your system? Do you have the right hardware ready to install SQL Server? And do you have the right software ready to install SQL Server? There are different minimums and recommendations you'll run across, but basically if you have about a half a gig of memory, you're ready for SQL Express. If you have a gig or more, you're ready for any version of SQL 2008. Here we have Windows XP Service Pack 2, which is fully capable of running SQL Server 2008. SQL Server 2008 has some other requirements. It needs .NET 3.5 or higher in order to run. Now, Windows XP does have .NET, but some versions might be older than .NET 3.5. So as I pop in the CD, it says it needs to install 3.5. I accept this and continue with the installation. Now, there are other requirements, and I'm missing one item, which I'll show you a little later what does and how you get around that. And here it is. Not all versions of Windows XP have the Microsoft Windows Installer 3.1. Now, Windows XP can run it, so you might have to download this to get everything going. At this point, you should exit and reboot. Now that we're back, let's go find Windows Installer 3.1 and download it. Now, I'm going to go to the search engine, www.live.com, which is Microsoft's, which does a very good job of finding Microsoft downloads, and type in Windows Installer 3.1. And the first link that comes up is exactly what we're looking for. Now if you scroll to the bottom and you see this link here, click it and then say run. It doesn't take very long because it's only two and a half megabytes. Click run again and the installation starts up. Hit the next button. You have to accept the user license agreement to continue with the install. It won't take very long for the install to complete and when it's done, it's installed and running. Now, the installer should not be running while you install SQL Server, so I would recommend a reboot, even though it doesn't ask for it. At this point, you want the SQL Server 2008 install to start again. You can either take the CD out and slap it back in, or you can go straight to the CD in your Windows Explorer and search for the setup.exe and double-click it. This time, it will earnestly upgrade your .NET framework. In order to continue, you have to accept the licensing agreement. You can read through this by scrolling all the way to the bottom. And once you accept the terms, you click this first radio button and hit the install button. Now this takes a bit of time. You're going to notice if you look in my clock in the lower right corner, the minutes are going to go by a little faster as I take out some of the frames that take a while to process. Once done, like you see here, you have the .NET 3.5 framework installed. If the installer finds anything else that is necessary before continuing with the SQL Server installation, it'll ask you to agree, hit next, follow the steps, and then you're almost to the point of getting ready to do the real install. And you've earned yourself another reboot. After the reboot, it takes about a minute, but this box pops up with your planning, installation, and maintenance choices. Instead of clicking on planning, let's go straight to installation. And let's take this first one. Install SQL Server as a standalone with all its features. 
It takes a little time to go through this, but once you're through, you're at the Setup Support Rules. You can hit the details to see all the passing marks, then hit OK. Now, if you've got the CD, you need to type in the CD key. Mine was purchased online and came with the box, but it's only for me, so let's blur this out. Hit the Next button. OK, you got your key. Ready to do business? Let's look at the agreement. Read through the agreement, and if you like what it says, you can accept the terms. Now you can hit the Next button and continue with the install. Things are pretty straightforward where you wait and hit Next until you get to this screen. Some of these checkboxes have entire books around just that subject matter. For the purpose of this book, we're going to need the Database Services Engine, which does all the management system stuff, and we're going to need the user interface that talks to the engine by checking these two boxes. After this, you'll have a few long waits with a few times where you're hitting Next just to verify you want to continue, and then you get to the security section of the install, which is seen here. SQL Server wants to know a couple of things. First off, what accounts are our SQL services going to use? Well, a handy one that's right here from the drop-down is the NT Authority system. Notice it filled in the NT Authority system for all service accounts. The next security question is, who is going to have full administrative access of this SQL Server? Oftentimes, the person installing does it, so SQL 2008 has this Add Current User button. If you click that, it will add the user you're logged in as while doing the install. There, my computer and name appears. After hitting Next two more times, you will eventually get to the list of choices that shows what you have selected. You hit Next again, and this is going to take a little while to install. We hit next at 12.45 p.m. Let's see what time this finishes. On this machine with 1 gig of RAM, it took about 15 minutes to do that final stage. And then it gives you a supplemental information report of everything that was installed. Hit close. Your SQL install is now completed. Want to see what you've done? Notice the programs has a new program listed. Go to SQL Server 2008. Go to SQL Server Management Studio. And it fires up. So that's what installing SQL 2008 on a Windows platform is all about. Next item, time to read and get into chapter 2.